Good evening. Welcome to the City of Laconia Conservation Commission meeting for Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. I'm Dean Anson. Deb Williams. Lisa Morin. Ashley Ruprecht. Okay, we have a quorum, and we're going to start off the meeting with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to say play ball. <laughs> I always wanted to say, play ball. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we have the minutes from March 3rd, 2021. Anybody have any comments on those? No, I'll make a motion that we accept them as they are. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Thank you for doing those, Ashley. Okay. I'm sorry. You said, I said thank you for doing those, Ashley. No problem. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. No discussion? Okay. With that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. The next item is any update on Pearly Pond, Ashley? So I uh, don't have an update on the timeline or whether or not they're going to be able to do the full extent of the project, which would include that swale construction in addition to removing the woody vegetation. We don't have an update from city council on whether they're going to have the budget to do the full scope or half or, you know, which, which way they're leaning. So um, I know, Dean, you had uh, bought some at bulbs, some irises. Yeah, I I bought them, but they haven't been delivered yet. Okay. I just have to call and yeah. ask them to send them. And you would need to plant those in the spring for them to come up the next year. I would suggest not planting anything yet because they haven't figured out what they want to do. I would hate to see you put something in and then they decide, yes, let's do the whole thing, and then they have to dig them out. Right. So... I think holding back on planting, it's good to know that you want to plant those and where you want to plant them, but I would advise not planting them yet. Okay. They might, I mean, if the bulbs, you can do them in the fall too. Well, I don't know. No? I, well, I have to ask the company about, you know, their schedule and holding them. And I mean, the other thing you could do is if you have like a rain garden project or whatever, I mean, you could plant them now and divide them or dig them up because they're... Right. And uh, that was, so I had two ideas. One was to, um, I ordered 100. I can cut the order in half and only have 50 delivered now and then 50 mm -hmm. delivered in the fall. Um, or we could do what Lisa suggested, which is, you know, find some places to plant them to Actually, we could put some over at the transfer station, right? Good. I, 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 yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't, I can't speak for them, but we did right. do plantings there. I, but where was I hearing about doing rain garden projects? Where did I hear that? Okay, so was that you? There were, yeah, two rain garden projects up at um, Robbie Mills. Ah. Uh -huh. You know, there's that one place where the. Um, a culvert comes out from under the fence okay. and there's a little swale there okay. that that then flows along um, Meredith Center Road mm. it co connects over and goes down so there and then there's one further down that is um, deeper into you know grade wise it's deeper that is over near the entrance into Robbie Mills you know what I mean mm -hmm. it would would maintenance agree to not cut them down? Right. Um, I talked to um, Amy um, Grant, and I, I asked her if it was okay to do that, to do that planting, and she said just let her know when we're ready to do it, 
she would have her guys help out, and then they would mark off the area and not oh, Yeah, I was going to say, maybe we could get some signage or something that, that reminds them. Yeah, because, it, and that's a good idea, um, having okay, signs, because we could put the signs at Pearly Farm or whatever. right on the fence. All right. Hmm. And then Pearly Pond would get some other signs. And okay. Okay. And then the other... The other rain garden happens to be on, you know, his, well, there's one right down here, right by the door, mm, the looking, exit door. It's looking pretty bare. Right, and that that <clears throat> needs to be re rejuvenated, so. So if we did, and that one we could, you know, if we could just get Amy to have her guys loosen it up for us, though it made it easier for us to do it, that would mm -hmm. be. So those would be and, the... And not mow it. <laughs> well, that's why I said get the little signs, you know, just a reminder. Mm. So I think signs are a good idea to... <laughs> I'm just thinking, Deb, they move the signs to mow it and then put the sign back. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so that's... That's the update on, on Pearly Pond. Lake Coast Program... Um, so I submitted the grant, uh, we should hear by April 30th, if we, if we got it. Um, it was, once again, it was for $1,200. That's, they, they give you a, an amount that you can apply for based on how many inspections you do each year. Um, so as the, for the budget, I put in 10 to $11 an hour. 12 hours a week, it's just would be eight to two, Saturday and Sunday, this is for OPG. Um, would be for 10 weeks from July 3rd to September 6th. So, did. How, how many hours a week? 12. 12 hours a week? Yes. Okay. So, did COVID increase the traffic there? Could we have yes. applied, could we have applied for more? Not. No, th because they go by last year's count of boat inspections and it's like I think that I think the category we were in was up to 500 boats for the summer and I think we were for 400 something what what do we think is the realistic boat usage there not Lake Coast inspections but boat usage there does, any, does anybody have a clue during the week it's not it's mostly local and it's you know the kayaks and the small small boats mm -hmm. it's the weekends where we see an influx now from out of state or whatever that come up still are the lake coast going over kayaks too though i would think they do oh whenever they're there sure yep. yeah I, I i mean i just it's one of those things where you'd like to see the program grow but then is it growing bigger than you can really manage it and that's kind of where i was going with right it, well we have so we, we have to do volunteer hours. Um, I submitted three hours a week for 18 weeks. So if, say, our, our program for a paid Lake Coast would run from July 3rd mm -hmm. to September 6th. Mm -hmm. And with, um, with the volunteers, we can go, you know, we could start Memorial Day and go into September. So, I mean, three hours a week is pretty, I think that's pretty doable. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody, you know, if once again, if anybody wanted to go over during the week and just sit for an hour, I mean, that's not bad. It, there'll be um, probably an hour a week of data submission. So, you know, we'll we'll get those volunteer oh, yeah. to your to your hours pretty easily. Easily. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, a, a, a kind of an interesting little side note. I don't know if you guys saw it I get on the New Hampshire Lakes website. They had an article about cyanobacteria affecting eagles, bald eagles. Mm. And I guess they did a study and they found that the cyanobacteria, a specific kind, was actually sticking to the bottom side of the hydrilla plants, which hydrilla is an invasive species, mm -hmm. which we don't have right now. But 
it was interesting that it picked that plant to stick on, and then when the when the eagles, you know, would eat fish from that area, they would actually get a neurological mm-hmm. problem. That you could, mm. they said they could see them. They'd like try to land on the branch and miss the branch, hmm. and then it would ev- eventually kill them. So, wow. So there's, you know, more to be said about invasive species. <laughs> sure. You know, it, there's such a chain. Well, and I, was it the New Hampshire on the uh, the WMUR? They were talking about how we would see a recharge. Of the, because we didn't have a lot of snow, mm-hmm. and whoever, whatever official it was, I was trying to, I was doing other things this morning, was talking about, well, it's, it's runoff, it's stormwater runoff, that's where we'll get all our recharge. But he didn't talk about pollution or anything, he just said, oh, well, that's where we'll get our, right. I was like, whoa, you need to back that up. <laughs> yeah. That's where we'll get our what? Our recharge this year is from stormwater there, runoff. Yeah, because we don't have a lot of snow melt, once again. They were, they were talking about some streams and... I think, and and this guy who was the official from somewhere. I'm not sure if it was DOT or what. I, I apologize. It was on. I him. think it was DES, and they were talking about because oh, okay. they're worried again about the lake levels. Yeah, yeah, maybe already. So so anyway, like I said, I it, you know I think quoting that person and putting out some sort of you know PSA about reducing your fertilizer use and you know car washing on on your driveway and I don't know. Well. You know, in the other, I mean, it's when you start to look at the different ramifications. That huge lake in Florida that's breaking <laughs> breaking through the dam is all waste from fertilizer yeah. processing. Yeah, it's like insane. And they're injecting it into what it's going to wind up in the Gulf of Mexico. They, yeah. yeah, you're right. And they said that it's already a few places. It's hit Tampa Bay. Then they're going to have. You know they're going to have algae blooms and yeah, but it's it's like heavy metals. I mean, it's a really a toxic thing. Yeah, it's a toxic co- cocktail, and it's it to me it's like if you are going to have all this byproduct from making fertilizer that we don't shouldn't be using anyway <laughs> with yeah. phosphorus in it, then why are we doing this? The the <laughs> the, the other option for meeting our volunteer hours is for us to contribute dollars to uh, New Hampshire lakes. Mm-hmm. And if, if we contributed money, it could be used to pay lake hosts, or it just stays, it doesn't, we don't get it refunded at the end of the year. Right. They just, New Hampshire lakes keeps it. Yeah. Is that is is that something we could look at in maybe July and say, hey, have we already started using our volunteer hours? If not, maybe we want to put a, a little money towards that. Or, I mean, um, ideally, they like to have the budget, you know, before up, up. yeah, beforehand. Um, so I'm, especially if they're going to, because when we give them money and then if they say if we wanted to pay our lake host for you know a higher amount or for longer. They they're the ones that, um, you know, take care of all the, sure. the checks and stuff. And I, I'm, I'd support you, Dean, if you wanted to make a motion about it, or if you want to wait, I'm fine with that too. So. Uh, well I think the, we should wait and see how it goes. Well, the one thing we could do is we could make you know we could pass a motion that said that we have allocated this amount of money but not to be sent to New Hampshire Lakes until a specific date. Do a review on a monthly basis and see how many hours, volunteer hours, we've accumulated. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't, like I said, I, I don't know how, I mean, they, they took the money from Winnesquam after the fact, right? Budget. No, you we had, did. You had some. Yeah, we had five thousand dollars in the budget for at Winnesquam, okay. and we wound up paying all that money to them. But I think the combination. I think 
that money more than offset what we would have had to put in for volunteer yes, and we still had volunteer hours right and you because that's extensive hours over at Winnesquam right I, I think this is very doable for okay. OPG you know okay. three hours mm -hmm. a week um, okay so we'll, we'll see how I think we should see how it goes so the 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 question is where are we going to get the paid employees we'll have to advertise or okay. find somebody um, okay, so I've been talking with Betty Ballantyne, who is a member of Kiwanis, and she is, um, I think I go and make a presentation to Kiwanis May 18th, and um, because I talked to her about getting some of the key club people from Laconia High School and she said you know and I told her we were looking for people who could be paid to be lake host well if they're if I they're eight you know if they're 18 or if they're a senior or whatever I mean they yeah. they have they to have be to 16 be responsible but they have to be a mature right so so they, they have to be 18 no I think they have to be 16 okay a mature 16 you what? You said a mature 16. A mature, yes, a mature 16. <laughs> right. Do you want me to put something in the links? We're putting a link. Um, or we could have Amy Lavisic put something on her Facebook, since we don't have Facebook, possibly. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we need to yet. Okay. But. Let, let's see what Kiwanis, uh, what Key Club comes up with. Because if Key Club has people, I would like to have a relationship with Key Club so that they would volunteer to help us when we were going to do stenciling of, of drains or garbage pickup or whatever we were going to do. I think that would be good for the middle school kids to see that the older kids are there volunteering too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that every year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so let's hold off advertising it until I get a, a better feel from uh, Key Club. Um, I, uh, the head of the Key Club, the adult, is... Um, Karen Abramson, mm -hmm. who is the librarian at the high school. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Okay. And then, so in terms of Lake Host, we're going to do, um, we're going to have Lake Host over at the Fishing Game Ramp. And I think we have, well, I know I have three responsible, mature, adults to do that and when is Guam uh, watershed network has essentially agreed to do it full time <laughs> seven days a week really really wow they've, and they've it's, got the membership so. huh they've got the membership i was just saying to her that well it, it's you know it's it's but those are that's paid that's paid full time oh Wow. Yeah, but they got the membership, but they don't have the volunteers. Well, yeah. not enough volunteers anyway. So, um, wow. So that's good. That's cool. Yeah. People will be happy to hear that. I think you know too. This is it's part of they're in the process of their watershed management plan. So I mean, I think that it speaks to their development of that as well. So. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're. They're going to pay, I think it's $13 an hour. I think that's what they paid last year. Yeah, I think it's 13 to $14 an hour. Oh, it's shabby. No, it's so great. It's, yeah, so it's, it's good. I'm one, uh, of, I'm one of those people. Right. So there's <laughs> Deb and a woman that um, Deb sent last year, Barbara. Barb Chapman. Yeah. And 
uh, Polina wants to do it. Oh, she does again? Yeah. Well, she's from San Bernardino, so, yeah. I know, but she, <laughs> well, we can talk later. Right. That's good. So. That's nice. Anyway, so, so that's good. And one of the things that um, Ashley is working on is putting together, um, getting the approvals and the signage for the two, both ramps, right? Both ramps for collecting uh, lead fishing equipment and monofilament line. That, that's what this lead tackle thing yeah. is on Yeah. Um, and there's a... I have um, many brochures for that also. Oh, good. From New Hampshire Lakes. It's so the, the one thing we have to do is talk to New Hampshire Lakes and... I'll do that. Wait a minute. So I reached out to Fish and Game because it's their property. I want to make sure that, I mean, I don't see why they would oppose it, but wait, so they're wait. okay to install the, um, a collection bin, which we would monitor. At Winnesquam? Yes. Yep. And then OPT is owned by Eversource, so I'm going to be and reaching the city. out to them. Yeah. So so you are getting the collection bins for the lead We would yeah. have to make them. So We're going to the make bin, them, but they're... They, they're DIY out of PVC pipe, and then um, the signage... The decals are free. The first five are free, and then the signage, the blue sign on that attachment, is uh, twenty dollars a sign, which is doable. Right. So, okay. other than that, just do the cost of the PVC pipe. And will they be like on the side of the kiosk board, or how does? Yeah, it... we haven't scoped out an exact location, but I would think that it's it's close to that area where you'd be looking to right. find out information about the lake, and yeah, I wouldn't want it separate right you know you want it in I would want it where it draws your attention yeah or so and it doesn't draw some people's attention yeah I, well, don't, I don't want kids like trying to get into it and stuff yeah well PT has um, like a dog waste disposal area too like a, a bag area so I think like near the kiosk right so we can fit it in that yeah that sounds good too, so. that's great yeah, I talked to Amy and Wes, and they were like, uh, we don't have an issue with it, but it's not our land, so. <laughs> yeah. That so whose it. kiosk is it? It's our kiosk, so the city has rights to put a kiosk and a porta potty there. Yeah. But it's Eversource land. And the porta potty is going to be on the other side of the parking lot this year. If we have to drag it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture you out there with a dolly, <laughs> like the two of you. It, don't, don't even joke about that. That's right. We almost <laughs> did last year. But there's, because there's a pole already on the far side of the parking lot for them to attach it to. So. I'll call Amy and make <laughs> sure that she's on board with putting the porta potty on the other side of the parking lot. Closer to the um, picnic table. Picnic tables, yeah. Oh. And there is a there is a pole there that she can chain <clears throat> the the porta potty to, so nobody takes it or tips it, dumps it. <laughs> okay, so milfoil. I don't have any new information, um, as you guys know. City Council accepted the grant from the state was twenty four or twenty three thousand and some change, um, so I don't have an update. I got to check with Rich. I sent out all of the signed documentation and all of our contracts that Scott Meyer signed once Council gave the approval. So haven't heard anything yet. I know that the herbicides they have to get uh, permits in place before you can put herbicide in the lake to treat milfoil, um, but. I'll check in with Rich to see if he's heard anything directly. I haven't they've, heard anything from any of the contractors, so. They've had some announcements in the papers already. Okay. I saw it. I know in the spring, normally Amy Smagula goes out there and does another survey early to yeah. just double check where she wants them to prioritize. So I haven't heard anything from that. I know Rich is normally the, the point of contact. and. Yeah, I saw, I saw, and it was, you know, just a notification of application to be done either, I want to say they said June or 
late August, which I thought was kind of... Well, I know we want to avoid... A big thing is avoiding the holiday season. Right. Because although there shouldn't be an issue, we don't want to deter people. Yeah. Don't, doing it on the 4th of July is a terrible idea. Right. So, <laughs> so the, the money that the state has given us, mm -hmm. was that money only for Paugus Bay? It was for all of the milfoil in all three of the lakes. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the question is, um, the city has allocated $7,500 for uh, in the in the past few years. So I have to ask Scott if they're still going to give $7,500 to Winnesquam. Okay. I know last year um, there has been money set aside in a milfoil, a separate milfoil account that the city puts out aside from DES providing funding. And last year they didn't do herbicide treatment on Pagas Bay. So we still have that money. We did have some dash work that went on, but right. it was kind of a lower, low key year in terms of spending, I think. So do we know if we're going to apply herbicides to Pogus Bay this year? Yes, That's we will be doing herbicide treatment in Pogus Bay. There's discussions about moving further south. Right now they stop um, at the Big Island as kind of the, the marker of the intakes are on the south, southern portion of Pagas Bay. And you've been a part of that discussion too, talking with the Water, um, water, water Council and uh, DES about moving treatment further south and the comfort level and practices and procedures that we would have to put in place for doing, doing that, making sure everything is safe. Yeah, I think that the, uh, the herbicide that they're using now is short-lived, used up real quickly, same thing, and um, basically hugs the bottom, doesn't doesn't get into the water column as much. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was one of one of the uh, benefits of that herbicide. So okay, good. All right, so water quality. This is a data table from the trip sampling that we did last year. We didn't get out until August just because of COVID and everything. And I took, I remember taking training from DES at my house remotely on how <laughs> to use these meters. Um, so we did get four rounds of sampling done last year. August to did you go December. out in December? Yeah, we did. <laughs> it was like a strange 50 degree day. I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but everything for the most part, so there, um, the highlighted blue area that it's not to the DES surface water quality standards, pH, um, it's the cutoff is 6.5. You can see there's 6.5 to 8 unless naturally occurring. And what they say is that areas that have are collecting flowage out of a wetland are more likely to be acidic due to the decomposition coming from there. So if you have like acid leaching from pine needles and decay from vegetation, it's more likely to be acidic. Um, I mean, this is fall. Yeah, so yeah, it makes you wonder if it's not yeah. all the leaves. I did reach out. I mean, these levels, they don't look super alarming. I mean, the cutoff, what DES uses for parameters, they say, I believe it's, I believe 6.0 is. What it is? 6.0 to 6.4 is normal low impact, but technically it's below DES standard. And then five to 5.9 is moderate to high impact. Um, so, I mean, October, December at 
upstream of Pickerel Cove, Trib 18. That's in, that's below six. I'd say that's the, okay, we also got a pretty low pH out of the tributary upstream of Outer Bridge Drive in December. So I did uh, reach out to Michelle Condon. She's the one who sends me this data. I drop samples off to her, and I just asked her if, this, if she thinks, you know, from all of the sampling that she does and all the data she collects, it, is that any anything to be alarmed about? I mean, it's fall. The two areas, the trib upstream of Pickerel Pond or Pickle Cove, that there's a large wetland system that drains into that. So from what I could tell, I don't think that there's anything suspicious that is contributing to it, but I wanted to get her take. So the, the data that has a line through it is data they rejected? Yeah, so the, uh, I guess it's QAQC right. that it wasn't, our numbers were off. And I mean, there's been times that we're out there and we're like, is this meter acting right right now? Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell and you can reset it and you can try it over and over again. But when you're out there, it's we take the data that we get and luckily they are able to vet through it. So, th so the question is, why are the pHs so, like the pHs in December, were Low. more acidic yeah they were lower so is that i wonder if that's influenced by the amount of precipitation that we had then so they're according to their interpreting vrap water quality monitoring parameters they do have a notation that says, sometimes readings that fall below the range are determined to be naturally occurring. This is often a result of wetlands near the sample station. Wetlands can cause a lower pH because tannic and humic, as hum humic acids are released by decaying plants and can cause water to become more acidic. So I would think just December, we had a warmer December day. All of that decaying material has been sitting there for quite a while releasing and we did have we probably went out can't remember specifically if it was right after a rainstorm in December but it was early December so it wasn't quite we weren't getting consistent snow it was still we had a big storm what are the normal numbers for chloride I'm seeing a pretty wide range here so the Standards are in the next column down in gray. So it says 230. 230, so 23. I mean, the only one that's over 100 is upstream of Outer Bridge Drive. It's kind of strange. Yeah, I, that it's that high? In that one place. Well, and the rest are all. But the, but the, that's right next to the road. Is it? Mm-hmm. The end at Pogus Park Road to the pipe is, that's pretty high. Well, and, and so when, when you look at that. So was this all, is chloride considered like all road salt kind of thing? Or? Probably. And it's, and so Outer Bridge Drive is here, and then you go down to the uh, to Pogus Bay, so the whatever we're getting here is just coming down there. So we're just sampling upstream. Of, well, we're we're sampling upstream, and there is um, that that water is coming out of the uh, the forest. But then it drops from one twenty to twenty. Right. Maybe. Yeah, it is odd because you'd think they'd be applying more road salt in December yeah. than I mean, October. Thank you for doing these tables. It's just, it, it is, it's pretty interesting. We don't have to talk about it tonight forever, but. <laughs> no, I, I think it is interesting. And I think that, you know, the, 
um, the compilation of the data is what really helps us to look at, you know, do we have a water quality problem somewhere? Like the other would be temperature. So look at the temperature. Look at the temperature for Trib 018. Went from 23 to 5. 5.6. <laughs> but all of them did the same thing. They all went from the 20s to, you know, single digits. So. It's, yeah, it's Celsius. I mean, it makes sense because it's December, but. Sure. Anyway, it's pretty cool. So yeah. are they going to let you know if anything looks totally out of whack? I reached out to her about it. Um, I'm assuming she's going to take a minute to look over it. Um, because I'm coordinating sampling, dropping off samples with her too, and she's been responsive on that. But I think this will take a little bit more than like a quick, oh hey, yeah, I can, I can do that. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know if she says anything is out of the norm. Can we get last year's data too? So, 2019 we did not do DRAP. Right. We did. Lay Lakes in August. 2019, I started in August of 2019, and we well, did. Well, that was, a, so you're the, you're the problem. <laughs> I'm not the problem. COVID's the problem. And you're the problem. We you weren't here early were enough for us to do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so 2019, the focus was getting the VLAP, or the, not VLAP, the Lay Lakes program mm -hmm. up to speed. So I did that in 2019 was hoping to do both in 2020. COVID happened. They said the boat's too small, so no no getting on the boat and doing the Lay Lake stuff, but we were able to right. yeah. catch up and do the V-Rap. So, but maybe this year. <laughs> That's, uh, it's a possibility. Um, I talked to Dean about it, and he said probably not May, just because we want to make sure everyone's getting vaccinated and, and whatnot and on the boat, but uh, June, July. We'll dig our temperature before we get on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> June, July will be a safer bet to resume that. So how long does it take to do the, do the uh, lake sampling? Half a day or so. Okay. All right. it's, a, it's similar to VRAP where the first few times are very slow because right. you're you know, getting the cogs turning again. And are, and are we, when we do the lake, are we doing the deep samples and the near shore samples? Yes, the near shore, there's um, the outflow of Black Brook. Right. And there's one over Malton. We used so. to, we, we did, didn't we do Malton Cove? Yes, Malton Cove and Black Brook are the two grab samples. And did we do uh, Pickle Cove? No. I, don't I think guess. So. I we guess. Down by the weirs, didn't we do one down by the weirs? The one by the weirs was molten. No, there was. We did. Um, yes, we did down by Christmas Island. Uh, no, I'm thinking way down. Way down. But that may be. That may have been a one-time thing. Because the we I went out with the I'm sure you were there with the water department one time, and they sample way down by the weirs just before the channel. There is a point further north in the in the in Pagas Bay that we sample, but um, we don't go like up into the channel. Right. Because we don't want to sample where the current is. Right. You drift too far. This was, and we can't drop anchor. It's too deep. Right. I think this was right before the channel, but I don't know. Maybe it was just a one-time thing. Yeah. On the <clears throat> on the lake side? No. Or on, on the Pogs Bay side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and can you find out if anybody's testing OPG at all? Yep. I can ask... Oh, um, 
the Lake Opeke Preservation Association and see what if they're doing any of that sampling. Okay. Um, I know it used to be Suzanne Pearlie, now it's right. Alan Gothier, and he's been in Florida, so I'm assuming with COVID last year, they might have not been doing anything, but I can just see if, <coughs> if historically. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen any data from that lake since I haven't either. for years. Right. Is it something that the Conservation Commission is interested in expanding? I don't know about getting a boat on there, though. Right. Because it's easy to do Pagas because the water department has a boat. Right. We used but even we used a private boat when we did OPG. I did it with yeah. um, Walter. Right. Yeah. Wow. That was a while. That was a while ago. That was a while ago. That's what I mean. He, I feel like he was one of the last ones that used his boat to go out there. But even if we just did a couple of the trips, like the one that comes in from Elm Street. Right. We used to we we used to do that one. And we did I don't remember doing any other trip. Right. But now there's the one that we, that uh, the water, not the water, but uh, DPW and the state created where they put the two drainage systems together and discharge it into the, into the. Uh, oh, uh, Brian Anthony Drive. Yeah. Right. Oh, that, no, okay. I was thinking of the pipe that comes out by the cove that comes from the Pearly boat. Yeah. That side. Out of the park. Oh. It's I don't know that we ever sampled that one. No, and that cove is notoriously bad. bad. Yeah. So if if you could find out, maybe you could look at a map and see how many um, tribs there are for Opeechee, mm -hmm. and then we could just put it on the list to go out and do, and get, but we have to get numbers assigned by the state. Right. I can I can do that. I can start that process. I want to see first if uh, Lake OPG Preservation Association has been doing anything. Cause they I don't think anyone's been collecting data out there, though, because from the sites that I checked, the reports, I haven't. Right. CES updated their site, and it's not easy to find. Everything is everywhere. It's not easy. And it used to be Lay Lakes. It used to be through... It still is. The, okay. Yeah. With uh, Bob. Right. Bob Graycraft. Yes. Do, do you have, refresh my memory. Was, I think at one point somebody was talking about putting bubblers in the cove. <laughs> that was my idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew I heard it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. I didn't like take that anywhere, but <laughs> that was just a thought. Well, it might be a good grant proposal. Um, it's interesting. We had the geese start to come back, and now they're gone. Because I wanted to take some <laughs> some grape juice and spray it out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and see if it would deter them, but but they're but they're they gone for now, hmm. which is kind of interesting. They were here before the the ice was off the lake. Yeah. I heard them coming in today. I mean, I don't know if they came in. I just found it. Yeah, um, actually, I mean, I'm not poo pooing this. This is this is the kind of research stuff that gets funded, right? And it could be for the school, right? I'm not saying we've seen grape juice in us, yeah. one of those sprayers, and we just spray it. Yeah. You know, we could we could uh, peg out a portion of the lot and see if it makes a difference. You know, I don't think they're there right now because the grass hadn't grown yet, so there wasn't like much for to them eat on. to eat, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's an, and they're. I literally, today was the first day I've heard them. I, yeah, I don't flying. Know. They were flying. Yeah. I, I don't know if you, I don't think it was grape juice that Ashley was recommending. It was, it was some derivative of grape. It was, great, wasn't it? Well, great, great, great grape extract? seed oil is super expensive, grape. and that's apparently a, a deterrent, but the, the ingredient or uh, grape Kool-Aid has what, the <laughs> same, like, chemical composition. Unsweetened. Of, well, because I'm just thinking right. about the soil. Right, the insects, and I mean, you could if yeah. you start putting something sweet. Well, no, I wouldn't. Like yeah, I would. It wouldn't be sugared. No, 
Well, I'm just no, saying. No, yeah, it's yeah. sugar free. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, no, I mean, it's, it. you know, it's kind of like the milfoil recipes. <laughs> So yeah. the the um, the state DES is doing deep water samples this week and next week I think um, looking at um, you know all the data based on the turnover of the lake because the lakes are turning over now so we don't have to do anything about that they're going out I think they're going out on. Friday on OPG um, uh, on Winnesquam. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know when they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to do Pogus or uh, OPG. I don't even I don't know that <laughs> OPG is deep enough. What do you mean? The, huh? What do you mean if it's deep enough? It has to be a certain depth before you have the lake turn over. Oh. Um. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if the state shared all their data with us when they, they go. Do. I mean, I when they get the that? data and they sent it to me. I, I can't speak for everything that's happened before me, but I haven't had any issues with dealing with them and getting what. But you have to ask for it first. Uh, no, oh. they sent it to me. Okay. Yeah, they they sent it to Winnesquam, and they um, said. A lot of the data did not was not uh, validated. wasn't valid, so they cross a lot of it off. But we were having troubles with the meters, mm -hmm. so anyway. That might be kind of <clears throat> interesting, like for a, like a monthly news thing in the newspaper or something, just for people to see. Mm -hmm. This is data from your lakes. Mm -hmm. Or this is what normal range should be. This is where we are. No. If you're thinking the sun or Laconia Lynx or um, I don't think, I mean, I can put that this is where to find it, but I think putting all these tables out there will be. Well, no, 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 no. And I'm not saying all the yeah. tables like that. I'm, I'm saying more of a, of a general information. Mm -hmm you know, how, how, how we're doing. I know um, New Hampshire Lakes used to have a weekly column in the Weir's Times. I don't know if they did that last summer or not. Um, and it was some kind of, you know, it was always some kind of lakes information or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, certainly the sun gets read by a lot of people. They say 18,000. I don't know what Weir's Times circulation is. Um, the state usually does an annual report. So they'll, they'll do an annual report for um, Paugus Bay. And they put all the data in. They, this is what it means. And mm -hmm. So if we, could, if we could get a copy of that, send it to the Sun, and let their writer you know, summarize it, and then put the entire document in uh, Laconia Links and have the Sun refer people to Laconia Links if you want to see the whole, the whole report. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of information that we could get out there if we wanted to. The, the fishing tournaments, mm -hmm. you know, it would be nice maybe to post at the ramps when the fishing tournaments are going to be there. Because <laughs> right, people may, Gives may people want a heads to, up. Right. People may want to avoid. Right. But the, and there, that's, that's freely, um, that's information that I can get easily, so. You can? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's, I think it's either on Fish and Game or I think New Hampshire Lakes has it on their website. Okay. Just some thoughts. Okay. More work for us. <laughs> so the next item is climate change. And is there anything in the carbon resolution stop? That's documentation you sent me. Just 
about that when they see do stuff. Yeah, it's. Which when I click on resolutions it. Resolutions that NACD adopted. You can view it, it if you double click on it. Um, it, it asks you to download or view. You can just click view. Just download, yeah. Just view or it. view. Just click view. And it should come up. Oh, good. Thank you. Did you just want us to be aware of these, or? Well, we were going to we were going to include um, climate change as one of the things we dealt with. Mm -hmm. And this is this is what we have so far. In the NACD National Association of Conservation Districts. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I don't think we have to do anything with that now. I think we just read it and. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next we have 96 Shore Drive. And those are the people aren't, that we went back and asked some questions, right? Mm, no, this was. Is this a doc? A separate doc permit. Right, but the, this isn't the one that. For the turbidity curtain? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay, so one of the things we got was um, a general turbidity curtain design, and we got it from. Um, The guy at um, Watermark. Oh, nice. Okay, Jamie. It's not Jamie. Hmm? It's not Jamie, is it? Glenn? Yeah, it's Jamie. That's Jamie. Okay. I called Jamie after our last meeting, and I asked him if they had, you know, when you when you guys talk about a turbidity curtain, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Can you send me? So he he said, you know, here's the website that you can go to, and here's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it's like meat and potatoes and so anyway so we don't have a okay so this is a new dock is that correct this was a, a wetlands pbn that came in and dean came in to review it and had signed it for the applicant i just want to back up so are did you put the website that watermark sent us as a reference or something and I think I sent it out to everyone when Dean sent it to me but I can make sure that everyone gets it in the follow-up okay I guess what I was thinking was is that is that going into that sort of list of references that you give people that come in to the office to the planning department looking for information that checklist you got the conservation commission checklist I mean yeah I had not put it in there um, do I don't believe we have an item specific to erosion sediment controls for shoreline. And while their example is a good one, I, I personally, there are many different ways to control erosion and sediment and to say this is the one thing I am hesitant. Well, I was, yeah, I guess I wasn't thinking that it was going to be like dictatorial to people. It was just here's an idea of what we're talking about. But it, it's fine, I just yeah. was asking what would happen, what hap what's the life of that document now that we have it and we see it, but people come in and they give us something that isn't what we think it should be. That was all, I was mm -hmm. just wondering. And the only time you guys are going to see anything with turbidity curtain is a DES application because locally we don't have jurisdiction in the water unless yeah. So okay. I, I could put it on the 
checklist, but no one dropping off a planning board application would see it because okay. you don't need a planning board application. Okay, that's fine. No, thank you. I was just wondering. <laughs> well, you know, maybe when we, so, so we get a, a permit by notification mm -hmm. and, you know, perhaps the, we could add a comment that says, is this, um, is this turbidity curtain um, similar to the one you're going to use? Or could you give us the name of the manufacturer of your turbidity curtain? Give us the web site so we can look at the design. You can certainly ask the question. Um, I would say that oftentimes what happens is the applicant drops off an application, asks for the commission to review it, you guys talk about it in a meeting, the chair signs it, and it goes to the applicant. So there's not really a back and forth. So if there's going to be a back and forth, there's probably going to be more applicants for DES permits coming physically to meetings or needing to come to City Hall to address something. I mean, if you're saying just put it as like a staple comment for anything that comes in, you could do that. I think when Scott was here, he had a form. It was a form and it had the kind of a city letterhead on the top and it was, you know, here, the, you know, we approve or we these. yes that or and we would put comments on the bottom right yeah and we've done that right but if you're asking so are we telling them this is this is a curtain that we like and can you use it or are you asking is there an exchange of information or is this just a comment that goes to des i guess that's my question to you are you not signing the application until you know well there would be okay so if somebody comes in and has a permit a, 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 a CUP then they they go to um, they'll go to the city's review right for a conditional I'm I guess I'm confused by the question so don't you have a review with the applicant? For planning board applications, not for DES permits. Okay. I suppose, you know, and depending on, I mean, not to make it real onerous, but if, if there was some question, we use the form, we write down that this is the question. Right. I mean, it's right. your guy, it's the Conservation Commission's ability to say that I guess I'm just getting I want you to think about how you want to portray the information to the applicant is it a question is it a statement and is there an exchange of information that needs to happen before you sign it or are you gonna sign it and then they can send it to the state so I think what we could do is ask the question you know what who's the manufacturer of your turbidity curve mm -hmm. and can you can you show us a design of that curtain. I don't think we should be recommending one manufacturer over another. Right. We can't do that. So. Yeah, we'll cross the bridge when we get there. Yeah. Okay. So this is a brand new dock, is that, is that correct? It's one that Dean signed since last meeting. Was there not a dock there before? Was there a um, So if they want, you know, if they want to do the metal dock, they, they can take out. The, this is the permit by notification. So in 
in theory, he goes right to the state. Right. Well, it's expedited with the Conservation Commission signature. I don't believe they have anything existing. Yeah. It's a seasonal crank out. Right. right. Yeah, it says here, crank out, removal in the fall. Except for the concrete pad. We have any other business? I don't have anything else. Anybody have anything else? Well, under the reports. Um, so uh, the Belknap County Conservation District and, and uh, some other groups have sent letters to Concord about the potential sale of the Oconee State School property and exact and asking for clarification about exactly what the extent of the property is they're looking at selling um, just for just just for clarification because apparently there's been some confusion about whether a hern was included or what does it mean this Laconia State School lands what does that so anyway um, that's one thing uh, New Hampshire Farm to School through UNH. There's there's several s schools that are interested in gardens. I know, so I'm talking with, with um, Deb has been trying to help, hook me up with the right person at Laconia Middle School. Um, Boys and Girls Club, their person's coming, their person who is going to start gardening is coming back, so the kids will be doing some gardening there. Woodland Heights Elementary School, we're going to do some radishes and, you know, and the, so we won't have a garden over the summer there, but um, the Holy Trinity has hired somebody, part of her duties will be to coordinate the gardens. I'm just saying, I think this, so there's, there's kind of this groundswell of stuff is continuing, so hopefully that will be, that will be something that will continue. Um, I'm just trying to haven't done anything yet about the community garden up on the OPT Bay State Forest, but I know that um, I think Prescott Farm is continuing with it. They don't have community gardens per se, but they're, they're, I've already talked with them and they've been talking about their garden program. And so you know, I, I know that they're, again, an asset and resource for the greater Laconia area and beyond. Um, I wasn't able to get a red, this is going back to Dick Christopher Memorial, I wasn't able to get a redwood tree, so I'll email you what I can get that sounds in the same, a good height in the same kind of vein as the, what the redbud would have done. <laughs> but um, That would be just as an aside. I, I think all nurseries have had a phenomenal year this year. Most, I've been reading how things have been sold out since January for a lot of them, so. Wow. So that good um, I'm wondering if we should do a few more tributes I guess um, Mr. St. Cyr who works at the recycled the transfer station he he I think he was the one who used to help with the Girl Scouts well who's Mr. St. Cyr I don't know, oh, his I know first name. Gary is that his last name St. Cyr I'm not sure and I don't want to say that but he uh, Mr. St. Cyr passed away last week suddenly. Oh dear. And I know he had worked up there for years and his wife Penny works with us in the kitchen. She works oh, okay. at our school, yeah. What, was he the man at the scale? I don't know. I, I know he worked up there and I'm pretty sure he was the one who would, because Penny was always there to help when we did the Girl Scout that was day. The, yeah, I think his name was Gary. And it could have been Gary. Aww. 
Yeah, I'll have to look into that. So yeah, it, yeah, it hasn't been in the paper yet in, um, okay. last week, but I, I'm thinking it would be nice to do something for him. And then Bud Martin just passed, too. I saw that. Well, so maybe your iris is up at the transfer station. is isn't such a bad idea. Yeah. Keep the hundred and plant some up there as part of the tribute. I'm right. not telling you what to do. I'm just thinking. No, no, no. no. I, I think that that's a good idea. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Wow. Let's do that. Wow. A lot of people making a crossover. Not a good week at school last week. I'm sorry. No. Especially everything's in flux now too. Anyway, so yeah. one of our custodians was in a car accident. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Alan. He works at night, but he's he's back. He did spend a couple days in the hospital, but he's back. And then one of our guidance counselors had a stroke. My goodness. Yeah. Who? Greg Schneeberger. He did. He was a young guy. He, he is, he's so deceiving. He was he he all of a sudden put in for his retirement this year though. Mm. So wow, I know. Boy, well that's that school is not healthy. I'll tell you. <laughs> Maybe you should get out. It was kind of scary. So anyway. Okay. Anything else in subcommittees? What about staff? Uh, so I did send out some workshops and trainings and just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. The NHACC has several different uh, lunch and learn workshops <coughs> that are free. They're about an hour long. There was one today about uh, landscaping invasive, like, you know, plants that right. unintentionally become invasive, like uh, lilacs are now being considered invasive, I guess. Because they suck her. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. But landscaping plants in uh, on town properties that are invasive. I turned on the webinar and then we had multiple applications come in and Colleen uh. was out this week on vacation. So I got slammed and I ended up missing it. So I'm hoping that they recorded it and I can watch it. Mm -hmm. um, but they do have two other workshops uh, coming up. One on... Um, Working for Wildlife Habitats, April 21st, so two weeks from today, and then Wildlife and Climate Change on May 19th. Uh, DES has VLAP training coming up. They have a variety of... Um, those, those were great. Thank you for sending those. Oh, no I'm going to tune into all of those. Cause yeah, there's a bunch of dates in, in May. In the evening, I can watch it. <laughs> there's a bunch of dates in May and June um, from a variety of topics like cyanobacteria and climate change and then just like how to do sampling. I know we don't follow VLAP. We do Lay Lakes on Pagas Bay, but I'm assuming, I mean, they use the Secchi disc and they are taking column samples or um, grab samples. So I'm assuming that it's pretty similar techniques to what we would be doing on Pagas anyways. Um, and then <coughs> Winsquam Watershed Network has a uh, watershed planning virtual public workshop May 18th 4:30 to 6, and I'm assuming this is definitely part of their watershed management plan. Right. So that'll be a good one to attend. And this. And that's that notice <coughs> has been sent to all of the uh, conservation commissions in the watershed, right. um, but it's open to the public, and it's um, I was on the. Uh, they do a monthly meeting of uh, that's run by the, the consultants, and it was it was really good. I mean, it was good because the lady who runs it is like she's got a chop 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 chop. Let's go. We're moving on, and it was a lot of information disseminated in a half an hour. So. But the yeah the uh, the meeting on the 18th is really important to get public input on this plan. So and this this Friday and Saturday is it the um, saving special places? Oh, I don't think I saw. You have to more. you have to register to be able to if you if you're not attending in real time. 
I think everything's going to be recorded except the something on the Abenaki Indians. They, that's not recorded and available out later. And they also had this like Wevo training. They're using some software, and I just haven't had taken the training. And I got this email going, "You must take the training in order to understand how to navigate the." Okay. So I, I'm thinking they've got something for you to watch before you. So, what organization does this lead to? Saving special places. I think it's UNH and this Forest Society or something that do it. Mm. it uh, Amanda Stone is the one that right. that organizes it. I imagine if you just I did you get a notice? I didn't. I don't remember anything coming in. I feel like a lot of events and trainings are coming out yeah. for this time of year. So I could. New Hampshire Lakes usually has something every Wednesday night. They, yeah. You know, yeah. It's more of yeah. more for the general public, but I will try to remember to email it to you guys tomorrow okay, no. morning. But I, I wish there was a one-stop shop where you could just be like New Hampshire or, or virtual I, trainings and click it and it would tell you like all you of the do. different that's organizations instead of going like I feel like I'm always checking to see yeah. when does, stuff pops up. Does const oh, what was that one that uh, New Conservation New Hampshire or something like that? I thought there was a place that was supposed to be like a one stop mm. shop. Mm. Yeah. But it's never really gotten going. I mean it's it's going but I I, I don't hear the name very often. Right. I did sit in a little bit with the cyanobacteria conference that was the two-day thing, mm -hmm. but it was from one to five, so I could I only like jumped on when I came home from school. A lot of it was um, like graduate students presenting their uh, their papers, their projects, and stuff. But it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, talking about the bacteria level in the air above. The, site, the bacteria in the mm. water and just a lot of different things that really make you think. Mm. I, I think um, for the two ramps we should have um, something about cyanobacteria so that people would recognize what it looks like and report it. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's really dangerous. I mean, it is, you know, I know it'll kill your dog. Yeah, I know New Hampshire Lakes has a fly, a you know, an info paper that we could put in there. Yeah, New Hampshire Lakes and DES. DES has tons of info sheets, so I'll try to find. Yeah, they have ones that are like several pages long, but obviously, real estate's probably tight. So, yeah, we'll find something. But I think if the if the lake hosts could notify. Uh, could be notified when a cyanobacteria um, bloom was was seen, then you know they could alert other people so that you know it can cause um, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Mm -hmm. right. So it's it's pretty dangerous, and I think the more information we can get out to the public about it, the better. So what? Because we have them in Paugus Bay. Right. I mean, haven't they had some down near the channel? There was, yeah, in the channel, there was an outbreak two years ago, right, or mm -hmm. 2018, so it would have been three years ago. I haven't, I haven't seen one in Opeechee. Winnipesaukee Bear Island every year. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely. Look at that sky; is gorgeous. It is. Yeah. yeah. Again. Yeah, the posting. Whoever, some there's some. One or two photographers that post on Facebook. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm. Okay. Anything else? No. Actually. I guess just thinking about the kids in the park activity. Uh, I found an oil spill activity that I thought was super easy to do and cute and cheap too for like being able to supply kits and keep everyone separate. Um, I can send it out in the follow-up and just see what people think about it, but we post. Yeah, because a lot of the activities, when you're doing it as a group, they're not socially distant. <laughs> yeah. You basically get a, a um, piece of, like, Tupperware, have some rocks in the bottom, and you make, like, a pretend ecosystem, right? Fill water in the pan, and then you put... Um, oil, vegetable oil yeah. in it, and then give them materials to try to soak up 
the mm -hmm. oil and what's easiest and then tell them to use the dish soap last and just kind of do like a mimic oil spill cleanup and explain like how, how that's done. So That's very pertinent right now. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what's the date? Of the we don't have one yet, but it's yeah. July. Normally, it's sometimes it's summer yeah. here. Okay, it's after the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll send this out in the follow up, just as a. I know you had talked about doing, um, like erosion, an erosion activity or some other activity. So we have time. <laughs> okay. You say that now. <laughs> I know. Don't blink. Have yeah. a bye bye. Well, it'll be interesting to see how things change after more people get vaccinated. See if mm -hmm. there are more activities that are open or in person. Uh, well, it, with the lakes, it doesn't matter. We were so busy last year, and I don't expect it to change. No. Nope. What is the city's, their man, what's their mask mandate policy? Have they been looking at change? Uh, so the city never implemented a mask mandate. We just follow the governor's orders. Okay. And that's supposed to relax when? The, I don't the know day? when it's up, actually. He, oh, he hasn't said? He hasn't said. Oh, he he extended he it the, the uh, another three weeks, and he oh. said we'll see then. Maybe yeah. that's what I heard then. Okay. So. But he did, didn't they put out a, uh, a statement on opening schools? Yeah, 19th. It's supposed to be back to full. I uh, moved that we adjourn the meeting. Okay. I was going to do that if you didn't. <laughs> okay. Or <I> start talking. <laughs> okay. Anybody have any discussion? No. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So I don't know if people have been watching, 